Hi Mike here from CP and Gadgets, hope you're all having a great day. Now today I've got the unboxing and setup of an Intel Nook Mini PC. Now the Intel Nook is a range of mini PCs from Intel themselves. Okay, now this one is pretty much the top of the line. It's the Nook 5 i7 RYH and it comes with a Core i7 processor and I believe that is 3 gigahertz. Got uh, Iris graphics, it's only dual core by the way, sorry, um, it's not a quad core process, it's dual core, but still it's very powerful. You've got the Iris graphics, Iris graphics 6100, it's got the M2 SSD slot, so you can have a, a really fast SSD card in there for your operating system and other applications, and it delivers amazing multimedia experience. Now the difference with the Intel Nook is it's kind of like a build your own PC. So with the actual Nook itself, you get the computer, the motherboard, the processors, the graphics and uh, the case and everything. But you then have to put your own hard drives in it and memory. So I've got a 256, sorry, 250 gigabyte SSD from Samsung right there. That will fit in the um, M2 slot. We've got 16 gigabytes of memory, okay, which is actually double the amount of memory my Mac uh, has, which I use to uh, edit these videos together, and a two terabyte Samsung standard uh, two and a half inch hard drive for other files and such like. So without further ado, let's get unboxing. Right, so first of all, before we actually unbox the device, let's just have a quick look round. Okay, just the box. So we've got the front of the uh, Nook itself there. A few descriptions on the side, the speed you need, the size you want. Uh, it's got AC, wireless AC, um, wireless capabilities as well. It's got four USB ports, Ethernet port, display ports, HDMI port, your power input, and one of the USB ports on the front has actually uh, got offline um, charging capabilities. So as soon as you turn computer off, it will still charge your mobile phones and things. And you've also got an audio jack there. They're all USB 3, so the two on the back and the two on the front are both all USB 3 as well. It doesn't come with an operating system, forgot to mention that as well. It does say it's Windows 8 compatible, but obviously it will run Windows 10 as well, which is just released. So if we just take the cover off and have a look inside. So first off, on the actual top of the box, we have the Nook unit itself. So I'll just zoom out a little bit so we can get the whole unit in. I'll try not to drop it. So here we are, this is the Nook unit. So as you can see the front of it there, the two USB ports on the front. Uh, that's a standard USB port and that is also the offline charging one. So you can charge up even when the uh, computer's turned off. You've got the audio in and out port there. Nothing on the side except a Kingston lock just there. We've got the power input there, display port out, ethernet, gigabit ethernet, two more USB 3 ports, mini HDMI. So you have got to have a converter to convert to a bigger HDMI port. Nothing on that side. And on the top, it's a black finish, but you've got the power button there as well. And on the bottom, just the technical details and then the four screws that you do use to undo the uh, actual nook to put the stuff inside, the hardware rather inside. So we'll put that to one side and just bring the box back in. So what else have we got in the box? We have a manual. Okay, so it just tells you how to actually uh, open up all the uh, nook itself and fit all your equipment. We have uh, what looks like some kind of warranty card. Just some basic information. Yeah, it's just the attention. Um, it tells you it does not include the stuff that we've already purchased anyway. We've got some more information here. Yeah, we've got uh, some special offers there. Another... Uh, just advert for their SSDs. A couple of badges we can put on the front. So we've got the Iris Graphics badge. We want that on the front of the system. And the 
it was picked that up. The uh, Core i7 badge as well. Run that on the system. We've got a Visa mount, so if we want to put it to the back of a television unit or monitor, then we can use that. Put that on side, and then finally, we have the power supply unit. Try to show what we're going to do. So that's the power supply. That plugs obviously into the back of the unit, and then to figure out how to actually open this up. Oh, yeah, there we are. That's where the country adapter goes. So if I have a look, extra in here, should be all different country adapters. So you've got sort of like for different foreign countries. Another one, another type of uh, plug, and hopefully this should be our plug for the UK. Yep, the UK plug, just there. Oh, and they look like there's another one as well, so for another country. Not quite sure which ones these are, countries these are for. But it is handy to know that if you're travelling with this device, you've always got different uh, plugs to use, so you're never going to have to sort of buy converters and things. So, we just clip that onto there, I presume. There we are. And that is the power supply for Britain. So very nice and neat indeed. And that looks like it's about it. Oh, we've got some extra screws as well there for the visa mount. And that's it. That's everything in the box. And that's just what the box looks like, empty. So let's have a look now at the other bits of uh, the package I've just shown you. So first off we'll just have a look at the RAM. So as you can see it's a HyperX RAM and it's 16 gigabytes in here. So two 8 gigabyte units. I can just open this up. It probably won't want me to now. I just had this open literally a second ago and put it back together again so I could unbox it. There we are. It's, up. it's all falling out everywhere. As you can see there's the units. I won't touch them because I'm very careful with them, but as you can see, there's the RAM units there. And a little warranty card as well included. Just put them down there. And here we have the SSD. So this is a 250 gigabyte SSD from Samsung uh, M2. So again, if we open this up, that's the SSD. You can see tiny. It's amazing how tiny these things are. That sort of SSD is probably inside a Mac as well, I think. I think it's that particular type. So I'll just be very careful how I open it. You've got the, obviously the instructions as well in the background and the SSD there. And finally, we have the actual main hard drive. So I'll just cut this with some scissors. Well, I say it's the main hard drive. In actual fact, this is going to be the data hard drive. So just a little bit of polystyrene there to keep it all nice and safe. And then in the little uh, anti-static bag is the Samsung hard drive there. And that is two terabytes hard drive. So that'll fit in the bottom of the Nook unit there. So that'll act as a, as a secondary hard drive rather than the primary one. So that is the unboxings part. Just one more thing I've got just to show you. And that is simply this. It's just a HDMI cable. It's a five meter HDMI cable. It's quite cheap. Uh, it's got the mini HDMI port on one end and a standard size one on the other. So there's no converters needed and I can plug that straight from the nook into my television. But it's just a HDMI cable, so nothing really exciting there. So what I'll do is I'll go and get some screwdrivers and uh, we'll get the case unboxed and uh, get the stuff fitted inside. Right, so here we are with the case unscrewed. So if I just slide this forward, it's a little bit tricky to get undone, but once you have done it, it just folds back as so, like that. As you can see right inside the case, there's not much to the computer at all. So what I'm going to do is just follow the instructions now and see which I fit first. So here we are fitting the RAM. Now I've actually just fitted one module because it was being a little awkward and I was trying to figure out how to get it in properly. But what you do is you take the 
uh, ram module so you've got the one side is smaller than the other line it up and then push it in at an angle like so slide make sure it slides in and then clip down and there you are two ram modules 16 gigabytes inserted now the next stop involves fitting of the ssd um, 250 gigabytes so that simply slides into here like so clips into place and then clips down there but we need a little screw just to hold it in place so this is going to be a little tricky he says because <laughs> i've got rather big hands and it's not the easiest to do so just bear with me a moment and there is the ssd fitted it was a little bit more tricky than i thought simply you connect it up here which is dead easy but then you've got a very very tiny screw just there that you've got to actually take out and then screw back in with the ssd in place and that was really fiddly uh, but other than that uh, the actual ssd itself is fairly easy to fit in so what we'll do now is a final stage is fit the uh, bigger hard drive the standard two and a half inch hard drive in this bay right here so what we have here is the uh, two and a half inch drive all ready to roll and then we just need to check the actual connectors at this on this unit here so i can just see you won't be able to see on the camera uh, that there is a little one at that side and a larger one at the other uh, in simple terms so the hard drive goes in that way and then hope for the best and just slide it in and push in and there we are it's clipped into place and that's it job done so that is the nook all finished now so i just need to screw the top back on or the bottom rather and we can get going with the installation and setup process so here we are with the actual system set up now. Um, the system there, the keyboard, mouse, and we've also got the video cable into the monitor. I know it's still a bit of a tip my desk, that's because obviously I haven't put everything away yet. So if I just move up to the monitor itself and zoom in, see if we can get the details. Um, as you can see, there's the processor information. So it's a core i7 processor, 3.1 gig, 3 gigahertz, um, and that sort of information there, which means it's all in working order. And then if I just slide across there, you can see I've got the 16 gigabytes of memory. Okay, and I'll just go into the drive information. And there, there we are, instantly it's recognized I've got the SATA uh, 2000, megahertz so 2000 mega gigabytes rather uh, the samsung ssd and then it will also boot to the um, I, uh, ethernet as well if none of those are available so next off i've plugged my external cd or dvd drive in rather um, to run the windows 10 setup disk so let's have a look at the display and see what happens when i turn it on hopefully it will boot up off the disc Intel NUC and I can hear the drive reading now press any key to boot from DVD oh it's disappeared and the Windows logo has appeared. And finally, after one restart because of a blue screen of death memory failure, we're finally in Microsoft Windows 10 setup. Um, so I'm just going to go through the process now and set up Windows. Right, so here we are, about a month just after I initially unboxed the Nook. Um, sorry that the video didn't appear earlier. Um, it's been a sort of busy few months really, so I've not had a chance to do the rest of the video until now. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you quickly the Nook booting up into Windows and everything is working okay. So if we just press the actual uh, button to power on the Nook and you see it's powering up in a second there. Uh, straight away it comes up Intel Nook and then that stays on the screen until Windows starts up. 
And here's Windows 10 Professional. It's all activated, all running smoothly and perfectly. So it does the BIOS size type thing, and then we're getting to Windows. So we just click the mouse. Okay, now it's just asking me for my PIN number. Let's put that in. Oops. And then we go into the actual Windows. There we are, that is Windows, Windows 10. So as you can see, immediately we've got the start menu back and all the different options of programs and such like. And it is really super fast. Everything's silky smooth at starting up. Just updating Steam there. And that is it. That is the nook in a nutshell. Really, we've seen it being built. It's now running perfectly. It's a month after the actual event. There's just one thing I want to test though, and that is how fast does it boot up in comparison to our MacBook Air? Let's go and take a look. And just as a bit of fun, what we're going to do is do a speed test between the MacBook Air, which actually I do all my editing for these videos on. It's a 1.7 gigahertz processor, uh, dual core i7, Intel i7. And the NUC here is a 3.01 gigahertz i7 dual core as well. Okay, they are both pretty much um, notebook components in the both of them. But obviously the NUC is the newer one. It has got double the amount of memory. This has only got eight gigabyte memory, where that has got 16. They've both got solid state hard drives. So in theory, they should both boot up very quickly. And the Mac and the NUC do both boot up very quickly. But which one is faster? There's only one way to find out. Fight! Now we are, the Apple logo and the NUC screen has come up, which is going to get into Windows first. Oh, sorry, into the operating system rather, not Windows necessarily. Apple is up and running and at the logon screen. And there we are, the Mac is at uh, the uh, NUC is too. Okay, now what we've done is I've put the password in both systems. So I've just got to press the enter key on both and both will boot up. And let's see how long it takes both to finish booting up. So on your marks, get set, go. Apple straight into the operating system. The docs come up at the bottom. It's still loading on the NUC, Windows. Uh, the Apple is still loading. Both are still loading. They've all still got apps to load up. We haven't got the actual toolbar at the top here. Oh, it's come up, it's told me it's Halloween tomorrow. And there's an update for some software, how unusual. Um, so we'll just say, just cancel that for now. Close all these down. And that is pretty much loaded, although it is loading the Drobo up on the side there. And Windows has, yeah, pretty much loaded. So as you can see, they both are really fast and that looks like some text messages come through from Twitter. So that is everything loaded up. And as you can see, they are both pretty quick, or very quick in actual fact. Um, the Mac to get to the actual logon screen was just a shade quicker than the NUC, which to be honest, actually surprises me because I thought the NUC would have just had the edge on it these days because uh, the, app, app, the Mac is actually slightly older. But there we are. That is conclusive proof the Mac still rocks on starting up quickly. And that is the end of my introduction to the Nook video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all again next time. Thanks very much for watching. Well, thanks for stopping by and checking out our video. If you liked it, be sure to give it that thumbs up, and you can always leave a comment below to let us know what you thought as well. Be sure to subscribe, that way you get kept up to date with all our brand new videos as soon as they're released. Check out our blog by clicking this button over here, and you can always follow us on Twitter and Facebook too, at Supreme Gadgets. Also, if you want to watch another of our videos, click on it, right here. You sure can't tempt me? Go on, click on it. Alright then, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.